I am Norma Williams and I have been a resident in this neighborhood for over 40 years. I originally came from Jamaica and I have lived in this particular neighborhood with my husband and three daughters um, for that time period. I am an educator and I retired from the New York City Board of Education after having taught for 33 years here in New York City in middle school and I taught prior to that in Jamaica for four years. I am an ordained minister, a reverend, and I'm very involved in my church where I do ministry. I am, as I said, an educator, not just in the secular sense, but also in the spiritual sense in that I have taught Sunday school, I have been superintendent of Sunday school, I do all the things that a minister does. I marry, I bury, unfortunately, <laughs> and so that has been my um, that's what I do. Well, it wasn't really necessarily my choice. It was, you know, you come to this country and this is where your relatives were. My husband was here ahead of me and this is where he lived in this neighborhood. So it was, it wasn't say my choice, it was where you happened to come. And so, because this was the neighborhood to which I came, I stayed, I, I like it. I've not really lived in any other neighborhood, so I can't even begin to say, oh, in comparison to living in the Bronx or in comparison to living in Canarsie, it has always been Flatbush. If I were to talk about Flatbush in the past, I would talk about, um, big stores that were even here in Flatbush. We had Macy's in Flatbush, you know, and then that has been replaced. Then it became a Staples, now it's a Burlington. You know, we had stores like Loman. Well, Sears is gone, unfortunately, because I think Sears was such a, a store that catered to, I would say to us, minorities because that was a store that you could go to, you could get all your electrical appliances, you could get the credit. Now Sears is gone. Um, a change also in supermarket chains. Right next to us we had a wall bombs. Down the street where um, Dwayne Reed is now used to be an A&P store. So we have also seen that change in terms of supermarkets that has taken place. Um, many of the small mom and pop stores are no longer around, you know, which I think is a disservice to the community because some, and also to the people who had to leave, whether it was because of rent or what, but many mom and pop stores have closed. And you kind of got to know those people in the stores because they were part of the neighborhood fixtures. Now what we're seeing is um, still little stores going up. So now we have our cafes, we have our, um, the bodegas, some of the bodegas have given way to Cafes have given way to little restaurants that pop up. Um, so we're seeing those changes. Uh, some of the nail salons have given way to stores that seem to pop up overnight. And some of these stores that pop up, they do not stay. So you have that constant change also in stores popping up and going out. One of the things, though, that I do say that has come into our neighborhood that is very, very um, good is Greenlight. Greenlight Bookstore, because prior to that, we didn't have a bookstore per se. We had our libraries, which were good. So now we have Greenlight Bookstore on Flatbush, and on Bedford, we have 
cups and books. When we moved to Parkside, um, it was a mixed block. You know, my neighbors to my right, they were, they were actually Jamaicans. And to my left, we had Caucasian family. And it was a mixture of different groups. Further down the block, we have, a, we have a, people from Yemen, a great Yemenite um, group. And, you know, so this block has really been a block in which we have had people from different ethnic groups living together. One of the biggest changes that we see in terms of ethnicity would occur in the apartment buildings. Because in the apartment buildings, we have seen a great influx of white people, which was not the case when we moved here. Basically those apartment buildings were occupied by people of black and brown people. We were either African Americans or West Indians who had come here, Puerto Ricans, Yemenites, or might have been other Arabs, I can't just say Yemenites because some might have been from other Arab countries. But basically, those were the people that we saw in the apartment buildings. You know, a large Hispanic population, they would have their um, celebrations going up the street. You know, um, they celebrate not just We Three Kings Days, but they have Las Pasadas, and they would celebrate that, and you would see them with, you know, going up the street carrying their figures of Mary and Joseph, and just, just celebrating who they were. So, and then, of course, when Labor Day comes around, it's a celebration of Caribbean heritage, so you'd also have that. But... That's what we had initially. So now the biggest change I would say is more white people coming into the apartment buildings because the homes haven't really changed ownership that much. But what we're seeing now in this neighborhood, Clarkson Avenue, one block over, Flatbush Avenue, Nostrand Avenue, two blocks up, even Parkside, going a little bit further up towards Nostra, you're seeing Linden. Oh my Lord. We're seeing all of these big buildings going up. They have replaced homes a great deal. Many homes have been replaced by, I guess, people sold their homes and the landlords in buying them tore down the homes and have put up these high-rise buildings. And that's one of the sad things I think that has occurred in this neighborhood is that we have lost um, a sense of what it looked like. You know, no longer are you walking down on, on Bedford Avenue and seeing this there were two beautiful homes at the corner of Bedford and Lennox on the right. They got torn down. You know, we used to, my mother-in-law used to go, she knew the people who lived there and they had nice plants and she would go and just sit with them because they worked in the same hotel. After the lady died, I guess they sold the houses and now we have this big building, massive. Horrible resilient in that living in Flatbush requires, it's a community, but it requires a great deal of resiliency. One has to be prepared to withstand the changes. One has to be prepared to forge through to become who you want to be because sometimes there are so many distractions. So even if, as we think of young people, 
they have to have that sense of resiliency that they can make it. You know, they might look around and they might see, you know, things that are happening. They might hear of shootings. They could become easily discouraged. But if they have that sense of resiliency, which I think is something that is tied with community, in that resiliency is something I think that is formed in, in homes. So parents are going to build within their children the sense that you can make it, you can do it. My family is here, that's a connection. My church is here, that's a connection. Uh, because my church is here, I have friends who are here. The culture connects me to the neighborhood in that despite the changes, and some of these changes are very subtle, that are taking place, you might wake up one day and you say, well, what happened to this with which I was very familiar? And you realize it's gone. But despite those changes, there's still a sense of um, the cultural aspects, so I can still go to the park and I can still hear the drummers beating on their drums. I can still go to the park, especially during the summer, and I can hear the sounds of the Caribbean. I can, we still, I'm hoping that we'll have a revival of the, um, what we call the Labor Day Parade. It's such a grounding for many people who have come from the Caribbean, just the fact that once a year you get to parade who you are. I think that's, that's something that has kept us in the fact that this is, we still, I still like to think of this as a neighborhood that is pretty West Indian, pretty Caribbean, despite the, the um, changes that have taken place. So that keeps me grounded here. Or that, that's my affinity. If I were to put it in quotation marks, whether you are from the Caribbean or you consider yourself Hispanic, and we do have that within this community. So I guess when you're coming in from countries, other countries, especially um, from the Caribbean islands, you come here and you'd have that sense of, oh, I see people who look like me, I hear my language being spoken, and so it's easier for you to just become a part of the community. And I think that's what it is for us. Well, in church, I always feel like I'm in community. In school, I feel like I'm in community. When we have our block parties, I feel I'm in community. When I can walk down the street and talk with my neighbor just at their gate, I feel like I'm in community. I feel like I'm in community when, it's so strange, but sometimes young people don't know your name and they might use a term like mommy. They're not their mothers, but <laughs> they see you enough, you know, and so they, they might, you know, you might say hi to them and that's how they respond. And to me, that's community. I really think that if more people could be loved, more people encounter love, caring, the community would be so much better. Because you see, um, love says, you know, the <laughs> love says I can see you, I don't necessarily have to know you, but I can see you as a person when I begin to see you as a person created in God's image, then I can love you. 
And if I love you, then I'm not going to harm you. And I think if more people would just begin to love, my God, the changes that would come about.